Hey guys, it's Ishani. So it is raining outside in LA today and I still have some of my Christmas decor up. It's been a very strange start to 2021. Let me tell you, it's been a really weird year so far. But we've got a new president, we've got a vaccine. Let's hope that things are only on the incline from here on out, let's hope. But today I wanted to talk about makeup brands that I no longer support. But I don't want this video to come across as me just bashing these brands or hating on these brands because believe it or not I've actually purchased many many items from most of these brands there's one brand that I haven't purchased anything from but the rest of them I had been a fan of the brand but over the years for one reason or another i personally can just no longer support them as consumers there's nothing more powerful than our dollar so if there's a brand or a person or a thing you just don't want to support don't put your money there that is the best way to show brands that you are fed up also, be aware that I'm not telling you guys how to spend your money. I'm not saying that if you still want to purchase from these brands that that's bad. Once again, we all have power in our dollar. So you spend your dollars exactly where you want to. I'm just going to tell you guys where I will not be spending my dollars in the future. Let's go ahead and start off with a bang. This is the brand that inspired this entire video. This brand was the catalyst for this video idea. So thank you so much, Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Jeffree Star Cosmetics is a brand that I have been so up and down and in love and out of love with throughout, literally from the launch of the brand. So I was a big fan when he first launched his three liquid lipsticks. I purchased his first eyeshadow palette, which was the Beauty Killer palette. I then went on to purchase his highlighters, more liquid lipsticks. I mean, I was a fan. And I will be 100% honest with you guys, the Jeffree Star Cosmetics brand has some really, really good products. I have nothing negative to say about the actual brand. I think the quality of the products is great. I think the theme he comes out with in his limited edition collections are for the most part really cute. I can't say anything negative about the actual quality of the makeup. However, I can say only negative things about the quality of the human behind the brand. The absolute shit show that Jeffrey has been in in the past, I want to say the past few weeks, but to be honest, he's kind of been in drama and controversy since the beginning. But the stuff that's just come out about the way he treats other people and the people he surrounds himself with just being so freaking nasty. I just can't, I can't support it. I can't support it anymore. Like I said, the products are good, but ultimately all of that money, all of that stuff goes right back up to Jeffrey himself. I don't want to give him my dollar. I don't want to give nasty people like that. People who put others down, people who go for the low blows, who call people all sorts of names. I think it's gross. I don't want to support it. I have absolutely no intentions of ever purchasing from Jeffree Star Cosmetics ever again. It's like a three strikes you're out with that brand. You know, he had strike one, strike two, and this is it. Knockout, home run, you're out. I feel like this next one is kind of a throwback boycott, but I feel like this brand has semi revamped themselves, but I'm still not purchasing from Lime Crime. I've boycotted Lime Crime for so, so long now. I think that was the original brand that I boycotted for a very similar reason for the Jeffree Star boycott. Um, the owner, creator, founder of Lime Crime is also kind of awful. I think because she was so controversial, the brand kind of knocked her out of being the main CEO or whatever. And they made this whole statement saying that Doe Deer, her name's Doe Deer, by the way, Doe Deer is no longer, you know, a part of the Lime Crime team or something like that. And people thought it was safe 
to purchase from them again. And then it came out that Doe Deer is actually still on the board of Lime Crime, so she's still actually getting a kickback from it, and she's not just not a part of the brand anymore. So that was um, a blatant lie. That combined with their website getting hacked a few years back and them not really letting customers know that their credit card information was just out for other people to access. That was a whole just mess and they handled that very poorly. With brands like Jeffree Star and Lime Crime, it really has nothing to do with the quality of the item, but it has everything to do with the background of the brand and when you know your money is going to a specific person, I feel like you're either more inclined to purchase because you want to support that person or you're significantly less inclined to purchase. And for me, this is a significantly less inclined to purchase both of those brands. So Lime Crime has been on my boycott list and still is. I have no intentions of purchasing from Lime Crime again. Not sure if this next one's going to come as a shock, but I am not going to be purchasing from Morphe Cosmetics again. Morphe is a brand that I have slowly phased out of my life over the past few years. I really haven't purchased anything from Morphe Cosmetics in a while. I think the last thing I bought that I can remember is the Jaclyn Hill Vault palettes. And that is one of the big reasons why I am just not interested in purchasing from Morphe anymore. It feels like Morphe is also constantly wrapped up in some kind of controversy. If you haven't noticed, I like non-controversial brands. I like brands that actually just do their job of releasing good products and let's not get weird about it behind the scenes. The thing I have the hardest time understanding with Morphe is that they do weird things that are just never explained. With the Jaclyn Hill vault palettes, you know, the little set of four mini palettes she launched. When customers were getting those palettes, they were not good quality. So Morphe recalled them, supposedly. Supposedly made a new order from their factory, which is in China. And supposedly they were able to create a whole new batch of palettes and have them shipped over and sent out to customers within like three weeks. So let's start here. For those of you guys who don't know, I have my own makeup line. It's called Rani Cosmetics. My makeup line is made here in the US, actually right here in California. And even producing things in California and getting them to the customer takes many, many months to do. There is literally no way, it's not feasible, for Morphe to order a whole new batch of palettes in China, have them produce it, and have them send it over to Morphe in three weeks. It's just not physically possible, especially when you get product from overseas. So we know Morphe was lying about that. Like that was a flat out lie. And then when people were getting their palettes, the batch codes were the same as the original palettes. So then Morphe came out with this story that they actually like popped out the pans of the old palettes and replaced them with the new shadows. So they just reused the packaging and that just, that doesn't, that, no, 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 no. It's not infeasible, but uh, in the three week time frame it is. And also, no, no. Just no, no, that didn't happen, no. My issue isn't that Morphe put out a bad launch with the Jaclyn Hill vault palettes. My issue is that we never got the truth out of Morphe. My issue is that they just blatantly lied. I mean, obvious lies as to why those palettes performed poorly. Obvious lies as to why the batch codes were consistent between the 
new batch that magically got here in three weeks and the original. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. For me, one of the biggest things that I appreciate about companies is transparency. I don't expect a brand or a company to be perfect by any means whatsoever, but I do expect them to not lie to their customers and to be transparent about the issues that they're having. And the fact that Morphe clearly just can't be transparent with what the heck is going on. We still don't have answers about that palette and that that bothers me. So yeah, I lost a lot of trust in Morphe as a brand and I can't, I can't purchase from them anymore. The other brand, this is the only brand that I haven't purchased anything from and I'm not going to support is Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Let me just start off by saying allegedly, supposedly, it's very, very likely that Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics and Morphe Cosmetics are one and the same. So for anyone wondering why when Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics also had major, major issues with their launch and the answers we were getting were again, blatant lies. I'm not gonna say that she took the Morphe approach because they're one and the same, but she took the Morphe approach. We're just gonna put it that way. Obviously her initial release with the lipsticks was probably the worst makeup release that has ever happened in the history of the world. I think we can all mutually agree on that. I think it was absolutely the worst launch that any brand has ever done ever. And once again, I'm not even annoyed or upset at the faulty lipsticks. It's not the fact that the lipsticks had hair and plastic and random crap in them. That's not even, I mean, that is an issue. Don't get me wrong. It's not my main issue. It's an issue. It's not my main issue. My main issue is the way the situation was handled after the fact. So you sent out hairy lipsticks. So now customers are complaining about their hairy lipsticks to be expected. And what's your solution? Is to say that the lab was wearing hairy gloves. Uh, no. I've been in a makeup lab. Um, they don't wear hairy gloves. Sorry, Jacqueline. They don't wear hairy gloves. Also, the hair fibers were embedded in the lipstick. So even if she's saying that in quality control, they had furry gloves that they were packaging uh, everything with, the fibers, hairs, shouldn't be inside the lipstick, you know? Other people had like plastic shards and like weird stuff in their lipstick, like actual pieces of crap. That's a no-no as well. I mean, come on, this is, <laughs> come on. Um, it bothers me that to this day, we don't know what the heck happened with those lipsticks. The worst part is that Jaclyn Hill and uh, the company behind Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, cough, cough, they know what went down. They know what happened with these lipsticks. We don't know because uh, the transparency issue, like I talked about. I feel like I'm getting heated with this one. I don't know why I'm getting so heated with this one. I, I think it's because I work in the industry, so I'm just genuinely curious how you can screw up that hard. I don't have any issues with Jacqueline as a person. I have every issue with her transparency as her owning this company and literally coming up with every excuse under the book and taking no responsibility for releasing hairy lipsticks. It kind of bothers me. Okay, the next brand that I personally just can't support is Makeup Revolution. Makeup Revolution has some really, really great, amazing formulas that they do themselves. I've heard amazing things about their foundations, their concealers, and those items are unique. You know, they're unique to the brand. They seem like some thought and innovation has gone into them. But then they're also a brand that dupes all the other brands. Makeup Revolution has, you know, duped Too Faced. They've duped Kat Von D. They've duped Huda Beauty. They've duped Manny, M-U-A, Manny's brand. His brand is actually called Lunar, Lunar Beauty. Sorry, not Manny, M-U-A. Lunar Beauty. They've duped his packaging. And there's something just, uh, there's something really gross 
about brands that just blatantly copy other brands. I understand being inspired by certain things. Of course, for example, after Anastasia Beverly Hills released their Modern Renaissance palette, there were so many warm toned, pinky toned, reddish toned eyeshadow palettes coming out on the market because of course people were inspired by that color palette, saw that, you know, consumers loved those colors and they wanted to release something inspired by that. I think that's great. I think that's fine. There's nothing wrong with being inspired by other companies. That's how, that's how makeup, that's how fashion, that's how beauty works. However, when you take an item and basically replicate it down to the way it looks, the packaging and or the exact color layout, just duping the colors one next to the other. I don't like that. As a brand owner, I really don't like that. I have personally had uh, brands, which we're not gonna name in this video, but I have had brands personally dupe down to the colors and the formula. Um, my lipsticks. Maybe I'll do a story time on that one day if you guys want to see that, but uh, it kind of sucks. You know, it sucks, especially as a smaller brand. I felt really bad when they replicated the Lunar Beauty. They replicated the highlighter packaging, by the way. I know I work so hard. I feel like Manny works really hard on his brand to create something new, unique, new formulas, cool packaging, concepts, things you guys will be inspired by. And then for another company, especially a bigger company like Makeup Revolution, to just blatantly rip off small brands or even just other brands like Too Faced and Kat Von D and stuff or whatever it's called now. It's not called Kat Von D. Kendo Vegan Beauty Discovery, whatever, whatever the heck the brand is called now. I don't like it. I can't support a brand like that. And again, it's so confusing because Makeup Revolution actually does have products that they created themselves and they thought up and had their own innovation and their own ideas and their own packaging. And they seem to be great products. But with those products side by side they come out with these very clear dupe products i'm not into that it's one thing to be inspired it's another thing to just blatantly rip off and then the final brand that we're going to talk about you guys might be surprised by this one because if you've been around on my channel you know i used to be a big fan of ColourPop. I actually haven't purchased anything from ColourPop in a few years now, which is surprising because I feel like at one point on my channel, I had a ColourPop order in the mail on its way to me at any given moment. The one big reason is I feel like they just released too much. There's nothing wrong with a brand having a large availability or a large like line, a large line of products, but ColourPop cranks out new collections so often. And I've gotten to that point where it's almost just unappealing to me. Another reason I can't support ColourPop anymore kind of goes hand in hand with the first reason. Um, because they're so affordable and they do crank out product so often, I feel like they lead to over consumerism like I have never seen a brand do before. I mean, I just told you guys earlier, I always had a ColourPop package in the mail coming to me and that kind of consumerism is just so so bad. I mean, it's bad for the planet. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for you and your wallet. It's just not needed. And it's like, we don't, we don't need this much new stuff coming out all the time from one brand. And the affordability of it is just that much more of an incentive to just over purchase. And once again, that's not good. ColourPop is fast fashion for the makeup world. It's fast makeup, you know? And I feel like now that people are kind of slowly boycotting brands like Forever 21 and H&M and Zara and all of these fast fashion brands, maybe not boycotting, but at least people are being more aware of what they're purchasing and are trying to purchase more ethically and sustainably and, you know, getting higher quality items. So it's like quality over quantity. And that's at least how I've been with my fashion. And I know a lot of people have started converting over into that. And I feel like it's the same thing with ColourPop, not to say the ColourPop 
quality isn't good, but the low prices and the constant releases makes you feel like you just need so much of it. And it's just overwhelming and it's leading to the whole fast fashion fatigue we feel and the impact on the environment um but just for makeup so i'm just tired of brands over releasing i love curated products curated collections coming out with just the best formulas and the best ideas and things that are really well thought through and especially in the past year or two i feel like most ColourPop things are just not they're just like throwing throwing things out there alrighty guys so those are the makeup brands that I am no longer supporting it just feels like there are so many makeup brands out there that why would I put my money towards these brands when they have some clear issues that they need to resolve when I can put my money towards other brands that are non problematic that have amazing items and that do deserve my money. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if there are any brands that you don't support anymore. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I will talk to you in my next video very soon. I'll see you then. Bye.